Hello, Mathletes! Once again, I'm your online math mentor, Sir Luther, and welcome to another tutorial video in this channel. Today, we're going to continue our discussion on the topic about proposition. And if you haven't watched our first videos, first and second videos about proposition, please do watch our previous videos on how to determine whether the given statement defines a proposition or not. Also, on how to tell the truth value of the propositions. Likewise, I also discussed the two types of propositions, the simple and compound propositions and the different logical connectives used to combine the component statements to form a compound statement. Watching these videos for sure will help you better understand our topic today. So, let's start. Recall that we discussed the different types of compound statements based on the logical connectives used to form the statement. And one of the most frequently used connectives for combining two or more component statements is the if-then or what we call if-then statement or conditional statement. So in this tutorial video, we will focus our discussion on conditional statements, its implications and symbolic variations, and truth values. So that is true. Uh, there are a lot of significant numbers of concepts in mathematics that are expressed as if-then statements. These types of statements are called conditionals. And when we say conditional statement, it is a combination of two statements, always or usually denoted by P and Q, and by the words if and then. Recall that I have mentioned last time, why is it called conditional statement? Since by using the word if means we are stating a condition. That's it. Okay, so the if-then statement is called the hypothesis and the then statement is called the conclusion. Also, the statement between the if and then is called the antecedent and in this slide, we call it the hypothesis. And the other word, uh, the word after rather, then, the word after then, is the consequent or in this slide we call it the conclusion and to recall on how to form a conditional statement uh, we have this example okay so given two propositions proposition P two distinct planes intersect and proposition Q the intersection is a line. To make this a conditional statement, we prefix the word if to our proposition P and the word then to our proposition Q. Thus, we have the conditional statement, if two distinct planes intersect, then their intersection is a line. Okay, and recall as well that any proposition can be represented in terms of symbol. So if we're going to write this if-then statement into symbol, we will have um, P, then Q. So the arrow heading to the right is the symbol for the word then or we can read this as p implies q and going back to our example the conditional statement if two distinct planes intersect then their intersection is a line 
this conditional statement has a true value since both the hypothesis or the antecedent and the conclusion or consequent are true propositions. To illustrate, let us use the corner of our room. Walls are example of a plane. And if the wall intersect, the intersection is a line. Okay? Supposing we have a wall here and another adjacent wall to this wall this one okay observe that if the two planes intersect their intersection here is a line hence the hypothesis and the conclusion statements are both true and therefore the conditional has a true value all right moving on yes conditionals may not appear in the if then form as always so an example would be all engineers are resourceful so the subject of the statement in this um, proposition would most likely be the hypothesis and the predicate would be the conclusion and expressing this statement in the if then form would be okay but before that uh, first point to remember Maclitz when writing statements in if then form if we are talking about people in general we may use the phrase a person or you are just like in this example we are talking about engineers so our our if then statements would be if a person is an engineer then he is resourceful or if you are an engineer then you are resourceful okay that's it and suppose we are asked to determine the truth value of the statement. What do you think? Is the truth value true or false? Before we answer that one, let, uh, let me give you this another point to remember when determining the truth value of an if-then statement. Unlike simple propositions where we can tell the truth value outright, in conditional statement, we need to determine the truth value of both the hypothesis and the conclusion statements. And if both statements are true, therefore, the truth value of the conditional statement is true. But if the conclusion is false, then the conditional statement would be false. We will explain this rule in detail later. Okay, so going back. The hypothesis says if a person is an engineer okay so this statement has a true value since it is possible for a person to be an engineer right however in the conclusion part it does not necessarily follow that if he is an engineer he is automatically resourceful which make this conditional statement a false conditional statement since the hypothesis is true but the conclusion is false okay so that's it for now and let's try this one express the following statements in if then form or conditional statement but in these examples let's not determine the truth value of the statement uh, instead, focus first on expressing the statements in the if-then form. Okay, so the first statement, we have three non-collinear points determine a plane. Next, we have two intersecting lines lie in exactly one plane. And 
all even numbers are divisible by 2. And Pampanguenos are good cooks. And people named Tom Marvolo Riddle are evil wizards. Okay, so let's discuss this one by one. Okay. So three non-collinear points determine a plane. But before we answer this one, let me give you the second point to remember when writing conditional statements. First, we need to determine the subject of the statement. And in this example, it is talking about three points that are non-collinear. Thus, the conditional statement would be if three points are non-collinear, then they determine a plane. Okay, that's it. Since three non-collinear points is our hypothesis part or our antecedent, so therefore, we are going to prefix the word if in that hypothesis statement. Then, the conclusion part will be written after the word then. So, that's it. Another example. Given two intersecting lines lie in exactly one plane. So, in this statement, the subject of the statement is about two intersecting lines. So, we have if two lines intersect, then they lie in exactly one plane. Okay? So, if you have noticed, we did not really copy all the, the original words. In the, in the original statement. So that is actually the third point to remember. So we need not to copy each word in writing the conditional statement. Sometimes or more often, there is a need for us to change the form of the word to fit in the sentence or to make it grammatically correct. Okay, that's it. And another example. All even numbers are divisible by 2. So, in our third example, the subject is about a certain type of number, an even number to be exact. So, we have, if a number is even, then it is divisible by 2. Okay? So, this one is quite easy. Let's proceed to another example. Pampanguenos are good cooks. Is it? Well, as many claim, Pampanguenos are really good cooks. That's one trivia uh, for you. So, in our fourth example, uh, remember my first point earlier. If you are talking about a person or people in general, so we are going to use the phrase a person or you are. So in this statement, we have if a person is from Pampanga, then he or she is a good cook. Or, we could have another statement. If you are a Pampangdeño, then you are a good cook. Okay, that's it. And, lastly, we have, since I am a fan of Harry Potter actually, then we have this example. People named Tom Marvolo Riddle are evil wizards. So again, the subject of the statement is about a certain certain name, which is Tom Marvolo Riddle. So 
the conditional statement would be if your name is Tom Marvolo Riddle then you are an evil wizard okay so that's it so that's it for our examples on expressing the given statement into if then form and hopefully you have a better understanding now of how to translate or express the given statement into if then form so just try to remember the different pointers i've i i gave you earlier so the first one is if we are talking about a person then use the phrase a person and then you are and when writing a conditional statement we really need to determine first the subject of the statement the subject of the statement actually will be our um, hypothesis part okay or hypothesis statement that's it okay moving on yes a conditionals can either be true or false that is true and a conditional is true if it can be verified by a fact okay definition property postulate or theorem and a false conditional occurs when the hypothesis is true while the conclusion is false so take note of this one a false conditional occurs when the hypothesis is true while the conclusion is false so that means true false the truth value will be false okay so if the hypothesis is true but the conclusion is false therefore the truth value of the statement will be false okay and of course a way to check if a conditional is true or false we need to state a counter example okay we cannot just simply say ah this is false or this is true without providing any counter example that proves that your claim is true or false okay and when we say a counter example it is made by citing any situation that contradicts the conditional okay a proof that our claim or the, the, the conclusion is false okay so let's have an example show that the following conditional is false so given the conditional statement if there are three non-collinear points then four unique lines are formed okay so the hypothesis of the statement is about three non-collinear points and its conclusion that it forms four unique lines the statement actually has a false value okay nevertheless we need to provide a proof that it is indeed false and to show that sometimes or more of often we need to illustrate the figure most especially if we are dealing with geometric related concepts like this one okay so to illustrate we have this one so given three non-collinear points a b and c recall that by postulate we need at least two points to determine a line so in this example we are given three non-collinear points that means we are going to plot the points in such a way that the points will not lie on the same line okay as you can see in this figure so we have three points here point a 
point B, point C that are non-collinear, meaning they do not lie on the same line. Um, just like this one. If we have point A, point B, and point C. So if we're going to plot the points in this way, so that means points A, B, and C are collinear points. So, but the statement says that three points are non-collinear. So therefore, this is the best illustration we could have. Then, let us see if given three non-collinear points, we will have four unique lines. So from point A to point B here, okay, this is one line. Since according to postulate, we need at least two points to determine a line. So that's line AB. Another one is from point B to C here. Okay, so we have line BC and the last one we have from point A to point C so we have line A C okay so therefore the conclusion is false given three non-collinear points there are only three unique lines and not four. Okay? So the lines formed from the three non-collinear points, again, we have line AC, line AB, and line um, BC. So this is supposed to be BC. So there are exactly three lines, not four. Therefore, the conclusion is false. So, the hypothesis is true, the conclusion is false, therefore, the truth value of the conditional statement is false. So, that's it. So, th this is how we provide the counterexample actually. So, by stating a postulate and illustrating it, okay, if possible. So, that's it. Okay, so let's have this example number two. Show that this conditional is false by finding a counter example. And the conditional statement is, if it is February, then there are only 28 days in the month. Okay, so in this example, the subject is about the month February. Okay, which has a true value because... Um, there are 12 months in a year, and one of those is February. So, the hypothesis is true. However, the true value of the conclusion that the month has 28 days, I don't think so, right? Because we know for a fact that every four years or leap year, February has 29 days. Hence, the conclusion is false, making the conditional statement a false conditional statement. So, that's it. Okay. So, remember, Matlitz, that to show that the conditional statement is false, we need to provide a counter example. So, by stating a fact, so it is a fact that February has 28 days. However, every four years, it has 29 days. So, usually, if we are dealing with geometric concepts, we need postulates and theorems, okay, to, um, to prove that the conclusion is either true or false. Here are the four implications of the conditional statement. 
and the symbol symbolic variations of conditional statements. So the first one is its converse. The second one is inverse. The third one, we have the contrapositives. And of course, we have the negation. I think uh, we discussed this one a little bit in our previous video about negation. So you have now a little um, understanding of what negation is. So let's tackle first the first three implications, namely the converse, inverse, and contrapositive. So the converse, inverse, and contrapositive, each type of statement is based on the conditional statement. Okay, So these three implications actually are taken from the original statement, which is the conditional statement. Okay, And based on the conditional statement, the converse just reverses the order. Okay, So for example, if the conditional is P, then Q. So the converse is simply Q, then P. That's it. So the conclusion becomes the hypothesis, and the hypothesis becomes the conclusion. So for the inverse, we only need to state the negation of the hypothesis and the conclusion. Then switch their places. Okay? So supposing we have um, inverse, uh, we have P, then Q. Therefore, if we're going to negate, it should be not P, then not Q. We only prefix the word not to the statement. Okay? You will have a better understanding if we have an example. Okay? But before we proceed to our example, so let us have this one first, negations. So statements are either true or either true or false. A negation is the transformation of a statement such that it will be the opposite of its true value. Yes. So if the statement has a true value, if we're going to negate that, meaning it will be false. Okay? And if the statement has a false value, negating that will have a true value. So if false if if true when we negate false. If we have false when we negate, we have true. And the negation of a true condition would yield a false conditional. Negations can only be represented symbolically. So recall that we used the similarity symbol last time, this one, okay, or the approximation symbol. Or, for example, if we have statement P, this one, if we're going to negate this one, we simply write the symbol followed by P. So not P. That's it. Ah, yes. So given statement P, <clears throat> the negation of the statement would be not P. And ordinarily, the negation would contain the word not. Okay? For example, um, two planes intersect. So if we're going to negate that one, we could have if two planes do not intersect. That's it. Or if you are dealing with mathematical equations, so the, um, involving equality or inequality symbols, we are going to change the equality symbol to not equal to. Or um, inequality symbol, just like this one, um, greater than or equal to. To negate this one, we may write greater than or not Okay, greater than is not greater than or equal to. That's it. Same with this one. That's it. And here are the rules that
I am talking about earlier on how to determine the truth value of a conditional statement. It is very important that we need to make ourselves familiar or much better to memorize the following to determine the correct truth value of the conditional statements correctly. So the first rule, the negation of a true statement is always false. So I've already said this one earlier. So if the statement is true, if we're going to negate, it becomes false. And the negation of a false statement is always true. So false, true. And the negation of a negation of a statement will result to the original truth value of the statement. So the negation of the negation of a true statement is true. Supposing we have um, statement P. Statement P. If we're going to negate and it has a true value, uh, it has a true value here, this one. And if we're going to negate this one, we have not P. That means it becomes false. So if we're going to negate the negation, this negation, if we're going to negate this negation, it will return to its original truth value, which is true. So in symbols, uh, it could be written as not, um, not P. The negation of not P. Uh, let's try it here. Ne the negation of the statement not P. So therefore, it will return to its original truth value, which is true. Are you following? Okay. So, for or to facilitate better understanding of conditional statements and on how to determine the truth value of the conditional statement. So, let's have the following examples. Okay, so given two propositions, proposition P, two lines intersect, and proposition Q, they lie in only one plane. So in this case, we need to write this in conditional um, statement form. Okay, so I have here, I have here four columns, the statement type the symbolism, example, and the truth value. So either true or true or false. This is or actually. Okay. So take note that there are four types of conditional statements. The conditional itself, the converse, the inverse, and its contrapositive. Okay. So, for the conditional statement, so we already discussed this one. Given two statements, uh, propositions, P and Q. So, in symbolism, we have P, then Q, or P implies Q. And writing the two propositions uh, into conditional statement, we have if two lines intersect, then they lie in only one plane. Okay? So, the hypothesis is if two lines intersect. So, is it possible for two lines to intersect? Yes. So, therefore, the hypothesis part is true. How about the conclusion? That they lie in only one plane. Supposing... Uh, let us use the, our previous example earlier about walls, right? Um, about walls. So, if we have walls here, okay, and another walls here. So, in this case, they are not adjacent, okay? 
the walls are facing each other. If we're going to draw a line here, here, and if we're going to draw another line here, okay, do you think the two lines will intersect? Obviously not, right? So therefore, two lines will only intersect if they lie in only one plane. So if one line is here and we're going to draw another line here, so it is possible that the two lines will intersect. So therefore, the conclusion is true. Making this conditional statement a true conditional statement. Okay? That's it. Uh, let's erase this one first. Mm, erase all. Okay? So hopefully, you have a better understanding of the conditional statement. Then, moving on, we have the converse statement. So, we discussed earlier that the converse statement is simply the reverse of the conditional statement, meaning the hypothesis part becomes the conclusion and the conclusion becomes the hypothesis. So in symbolism, we only need to reverse PQ. So instead, we will have Q then P or Q implies P. Okay, so we have Q, then P, or Q implies P. So in this case, from the conditional statement, if two lines intersect, this is actually our hypothesis, so this becomes our conclusion. And they lie in only one plane, which is our conclusion, becomes our hypothesis. So that means, if two lines lie in one plane, or in only one plane, then they intersect. Okay? Hopefully, you are still following with me. And let us determine the truth value of the converse form. So if two lines lie in only one plane, so that is true. We can actually draw two lines that lie in only one plane. Then, they intersect. Okay? So, can we generalize the fact that if two lines are in one plane, um, automatically, they intersect? What do you think? So, if we have plane here, for instance, okay. and if we're going to draw a line here, actually, I can draw two lines not intersecting each other, and we call these lines parallel lines, right? And by definition, parallel lines do not intersect, and they belong in only one plane. So, the conclusion actually is false. Okay, because not in all cases that two lines in one plane always intersect. We could have two lines that never intersect and that is parallel lines. Therefore, the truth value of the converse statement is false. Okay, the hypothesis is true, but the conclusion is false. Therefore, the truth value of the statement is false. Okay. Next is the inverse form or statement. Okay, so the inverse statement is only um, the conditional statement, but we only negate the two propositions. So, from P, then Q, we only need to prefix not P, then not Q. Okay? So, in symbols, we have not P, 
than not q. And remember earlier the truth value of the hypothesis of our conditional and the truth value of the conclusion of our conditional statement. Okay, so earlier the truth value of the hypothesis is true and the truth value of our conclusion is true, also true. So if we're going to negate P which is true, that means not P means false. And Q from true, not Q, becomes false. Therefore, the hypothesis is false, conclusion false, therefore, the truth value is false. Okay? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to show the statement. So, if two lines do not intersect, so observe. So, uh, in the conditional statement, we state that two lines intersect. Therefore, if we're going to negate that one, we're going to use the not. So, if two lines do not intersect, then they do not lie in only one plane. And the hypothesis has a true value and the conclusion has a true value. That means negating the statements would have false and false values. Therefore, the truth value is false. So the truth value of the conditional statement is false. Next, we have the last one, the contrapositive. Okay, so the contrapositive actually is simply taken from the converse statement. Okay, so from the converse statement, we only need to negate the statement. So if we have Q then P, we say not Q then not P. Or not Q implies, implies not P. So in symbol, we have this one. And the statement, if two lines lie in one plane, so we say, if two lines do not lie in only one plane, then they do not intersect. Okay? They do not intersect. And recall earlier the truth value of the hypothesis here. So, the, the hypothesis here is true and the conclusion is false. Meaning, if we're going to negate the statement Q from true, this becomes false. And from false, this becomes true. Okay? So the conclusion is true. Therefore, the truth value is true. Okay? So take note that in if then or conditional statement if the conclusion is false the truth value will be will uh, is automatically false but if the conclusion is true even if the hypothesis is false the truth value will always be true okay that's it so if you have if you can follow the discussion mathletes, um, try to comment uh, down below and then I'll try to explain it further in our next video. Okay, so that's it for our first example. Let's move on to our another example. Okay, so given the statement. Three non-collinear points determine a unique plane. Okay. So, we have, uh, we are going to write the four implications of the conditional statements, namely the conditional itself, the converse, the inverse, and 
contrapositive. Okay? So the symbolisms uh, will always be the same. Okay? If we're going to use the same letters, P and Q. So for conditional, of course, uh, let us recall earlier that we already we already um, represent this one as conditional statement. So if <clears throat> three non-collinear points determine uh, if there are if if points are non-collinear. If points are, if three points are non-collinear, okay, then they determine a unique plane. So if three points are non-collinear, then they determine or they form a unique plane. So let us determine first the truth value of the hypothesis. Okay. So is it possible that the three points are non-collinear? Yes. Okay. We can draw or plot points that are three points that are non-collinear. So therefore, the hypothesis part is true. How about the conclusion? They form a unique plane. Yes. Uh, we need at least three points to determine a plane actually. A triangle is a plane, right? Here. This is actually a plane. And that's it. So the truth value of the conclusion is true. Okay. That's it. <clears throat> and for our converse, just reverse um, from P then Q, we have Q then P, okay? And we're going to reverse as well our statements. So they form a unique plane becomes our hypothesis and three points that are non-collinear becomes our conclusion. So we have, if three points form a unique plane, uh, take note that the subject here is about three points. So we only uh, just uh, recall the pointers I've, I, I gave you earlier that in determining or in writing statements into conditional statements, uh, we need to determine first the subject of the statement. Okay, so that it would be a lot easier for us to express the statement in different forms. So therefore, if three points form a unique plane, then they are non-collinear. So if three points form a unique plane, so this is, actually this is uh, true and this is true and three points form a unique plane true then they are non-collinear which is true because we cannot form a plane if the points are collinear right we can only form a line if that's the case if the points are collinear so therefore the truth value is true and for our inverse we have to negate the conditional statement <clears throat> we have not sorry not p then not q so our statement if three points are not non-collinear or we can simply say if three points are collinear if they are non-collinear Therefore, the, the, the points are collinear, okay? Then, they do not form a unique plane, okay? So, oh, let's denote this again. Okay, 
the notations were erased earlier. This one. So if three points are collinear, yes, it's possible that the points are collinear, which is true. Then they do not form a unique plane, which is true as well. So therefore, the truth value is, uh, is true. Okay? And for our contrapositive, we only need to negate the converse statement. We have not Q, then not P. Or not Q implies not P. And for the statement, if three points do not determine a unique plane, okay? And it's possible that three points do not determine a unique plane if the points are collinear, okay? Which is true. Then, they are collinear or not non-collinear, which is another true statement. So therefore, the truth value of the contrapositive statement is also true. Okay, that's it. Okay. Um, in logic, we have another topic for that one if all the values actually are all the same. Okay, we call that one a tautology. Yes, tautology. And that's for another discussion. But for now, uh, let's just focus on um, about conditional statements and um, determining the variations of the truth values of the different implications. Okay. Next statement. <clears throat> Excuse me. All Martians have green blood, okay? So in this statement, we're going to assume that all Martians have green blood, okay? I haven't seen any Martian yet, but let's assume that all Martians have green blood. Okay? So symbolism, we have P then Q statement, the conditional statement. If you are a Martian, then you have green blood, okay? So, if you are a Martian, then you have green blood. So, from the statement, we, we already assume that all Martians have green blood. So, therefore, the hypothesis is true. And the conclusion is true. Making this conditional statement, a true statement okay and for our converse we have Q then P so we only need to reverse the hypothesis and the conclusion statements so that means if you have green blood then you are a Martian okay so the hypothesis is if you have green blood, okay, so it, it's possible to have green blood, okay. There are some organisms that have green blood, so therefore this is true. Then you are a Martian. Does it necessarily follow that if you have green blood, you are automatically a Martian? Not necessarily, right? Because there are some organisms, as I've said earlier, I've, I have already given you the clue. So, not necessarily follow. It does not necessarily follow that if you have green blood, you are a Martian. There are worms that have green blood, right? Centipedes. Okay, so therefore, the conclusion is false. That means the truth value of the converse statement is false. Okay, how about the inverse? We have not P, then not Q. And the statement, if you are not a Martian, then you do not have green blood. Okay, so in this case, 
if you are not a Martian, from the conditional statement above, if you are a Martian, that is true. So negating this statement will have a false value. Then, you do not have green blood, which is true. So this means false, right? And the truth value is false. Okay? So if you are not a Martian, then, well, it's possible you are not a Martian. Then you do not have green blood. So we already assume that all Martians have green blood. Therefore, that is false. So making the inverse statement false. And for the contrapositive one or statement, so we only need to negate the converse statement that is not Q, then not P. And the statement we have, if you do not have green blood or green blood rather, then you are not a Martian. So from the converse statement, the hypothesis is true. Negating this would have false value. And the hypothesis part is false. Therefore, negating this would have true value. So since the conclusion is true, therefore, the truth value is true. Okay? Another example. If a person is tall, then his height is more than 6 feet and 5 inches. Okay, so for conditional statement, the symbolism, we have P then Q and the statement. So we only need to copy the statement since, it is, uh, since it's already in if then form. So if you are tall or if a person is tall, then your height is more than 6 feet and 5 inches. So let's determine first the truth value of the hypothesis statement. So if you are tall, so it's possible that a person is tall, true. Then your height is more than 6 feet and 5 inches. Okay, so is the conclusion true or false? So in this case, the conclusion is a little bit um, confusing, right? Okay, but... Um, to, to prove whether the conclusion is true or false, um, let's provide an example. So, if you are tall, then your height is more than 6 feet and 5 inches. So, if a person is tall, can we say that his height is already 6 feet and 5 inches? Well, that depends. Uh, for instance, if there are two persons... Uh, one person has a height of 4 feet and the other person has a height of 5 feet, okay? So, since 5 feet is taller than 4 feet, so we can say that 5 feet is already tall, right? So, it does not necessarily mean that if you are tall, your height is more than 6 feet and 5 inches. So, it depends upon the person we are comparing to, okay? To determine if you're if you are taller than the other okay so that means the conclusion is false the conclusion is false so making the conditional statement a false statement then for the converse statement we have Q then P okay and the converse statement, if your height is more than 6 feet and 5 inches, then you are tall. So, in this case, the hypothesis states that if your height is more than 6 feet and 5 inches, so that is true. It's also possible for a person to have height of 6 feet and 5 inches, even taller than that, okay? I think Yao Ming is 7 feet something. Yes. Then the conclusion is, then you are 
tall. So, if your height is more than 6 feet and 5 inches, so therefore, you are tall. And the conclusion here is true. Okay, so that's different from the conditional statement earlier. So, try to analyze that. Making the, the converse statement a true statement. Okay? And for the inverse statement, we have not P, then not Q. Okay? So, copying the conditional statement, but um, make sure to negate the hypothesis and the conclusion statements we have if you are not tall then your height is more than six feet and five inches okay if you have noticed guys the most crucial part in determining the truth value is the truth values of the two statements conditional and converse if we already determine the truth value of the hypothesis and the conclusion part of both the conditional and the converse statements, it would be a lot easier for us to determine the truth value of the inverse and the contrapositive. Okay? Try to observe that. Because we only need to negate whatever truth values we have for conditional and converse statements. Okay? So, since... The truth value of the hypothesis statement in conditional is true. Therefore, this is false, as you can see. And if this is false, then this is true. Okay, so the conclusion is true. Therefore, the truth value is true. Okay, and for the contrapositive, okay, we have not Q, then not P. So, if your height is not more than 6 um, feet and 5 inches, then you are not tall. So, we are going to base, uh, base the truth values of the hypothesis and conclusion statements of the contrapositive statement from the inverse statement. Okay? Since this is false, that means this is true. And since this is true, that means this is false. So, the conclusion is false. Therefore, the truth value is false. Okay? So, that's it. Do we have another example? Okay. So, <clears throat> that's the last example actually. And hopefully, from the examples we have discussed, you have now a better grasp of the concepts about conditional statements and on how to determine the truth values of the conditional statement and its implications effectively. And here are the following rules of logic we may follow. Okay, This is actually the summary. Okay. So in example one earlier, the conditional is true, the converse is true, the inverse is true. The contrapositive is true. In our example 2, the conditional is true. The converse is false. The inverse is false. The contrapositive is true. And for our example number 3, the conditional is false. The inverse is true. The converse rather is true. The inverse is true. The contrapositive is false. Okay. And here are the, the summary actually of the rules of logic that we may follow in determining the truth value of the conditional statements. So the first one, if a conditional and its contrapositive have the same truth, uh, a conditional rather and its contrapositive have the same truth value. Okay, so this is always true. <clears throat> if a conditional is true, it follows therefore that the contrapositive is true. Observe. Okay, in example one, uh, we may not see it in example number one. But let us have example number two and three. The conditional here is true. The contrapositive is also true. In example number three, the conditional is false. Therefore, 
the contrapositive is false. Okay, that's it. So that's another point to remember. And the converse and inverse of a conditional have the same truth value. Yes. So the converse is false here. The inverse is also false. And the converse is true. The inverse is true. Okay. So if we already determine the truth value of the conditional, automatically we have the same truth value for the contrapositive. Okay, same case with the converse and the inverse. And the third one here, the truth value of a converse is not necessarily the same as that of the conditional. Okay, so the truth value of a converse statement here is not necessarily the same as that of the conditional. Okay, so does not necessarily follow. Just like example number two and example number three. The conditional here is true, but the converse is false. The converse here is false, but the converse here is true. Okay. In this case, in example number one, kasi, all the truth values, all the implications of the conditional statement are all true. So we may not see actually the, the difference. All right? So that's it for the rules of logic. So try to remember these rules for if then or conditional statement. Okay? So to generalize again, to generalize the converse and the inverse. So the converse of P then Q is simply Q then P. So it, we only reverse the statements. And the inverse of P then Q is simply not P then not Q. Okay. So we only prefix the similarity symbol for the statements. Okay. So we have P then Q. Its converse is simply Q then P. So if we have not P then not Q, so its converse not Q then not P. And the inverse of P then Q is simply not P then not Q. And Q then not P. So therefore its inverse is not Q then not P. So the contrapositives are the opposites. The contrapositives are the opposites of the statements. So the contrapositive of P then Q is only not P then not Q. And the contrapositive of Q then P is simply not P then not Q. All right, so that's it, and thank you.